we got you guys in. You hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, let's see what's going on with this thing. I'm actually stoked you guys signed in a little bit early. We usually start like the way we usually do these things is we start them a little bit early and then we have the band come in later on. So I usually start the stream like an hour or half an hour before, you know, we invite people. So you want us to wait till right at 1230? No, you're good. You're, this is good? actually okay. better. This is actually better. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, we, we try to be a little early that way because uh, sometimes everybody goes over like certain things that they do for the streams and stuff. So. No, that's it's totally cool, man. I'm totally right, cool. So welcome. Thank you for taking the time to you guys. Um, yeah, we we just recently started. Um, so we Brutal Planet as an entity has existed since like 2019. But we just recently this year started really doing like leaning into this live thing. So mm -hmm. we've just been like anyone that we can get to come on. We're like, hey, please come come talk to us. You know, Okay. Yeah, uh, you want us to send some people your way? Yeah, you reached. Yeah, the please, of the here. please, man. Send <laughs> send bands our way. Okay. So let's yeah, talk about. October Noir, though, um, tell us a little bit about you got about the band and how you guys got started, where you're from, all that good stuff. Tyler, you want to go? Uh, how we got started, where we're from. Well, we are out of Pensacola, Florida. I reside in Mobile, Alabama, which is about an hour away, but uh, based out of Pensacola. How we got started would probably be better for Tom, better suited. Mm -hmm. It, it never started. We're still trying to get started. <laughs> it does feel that way a lot of the time. It does feel <laughs> that way, honestly. No, uh, well, for me, it was just so. Uh, it's kind of like my one last two rods to do music or something and try to get involved to see what would happen. Um, then uh, it was mainly it, start, it started with just me doing everything, um, trying to get it going. So I, I, I built the whole first album just to see what it would do. And uh, I, honestly, I didn't think it would do anything. And we just uh, threw it out there. And yeah, it worked out pretty well. So uh, yeah, it, it never it never intended it for it to, to be anything like with a full band uh, going out and, and doing shows or tours and things of that nature. It was kind of like a, just a little project thing. But it was main, it was mainly due to the, that gothic metal that, uh, that basically Typo had created as a genre. Um, and just wanted to be involved to swim in that same kind of pool that, that they were working with. So, uh, yeah, I just started to see how it would go, and uh, it did really well. So I was like, well, I guess we'll put a band together and, and see what happens. So it just it kept growing. Yeah, I could definitely hear the typo influence in what you guys were doing. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. No, I mean it's not a bad thing. Uh, I, I don't, but you know, I think I think it's like if that's also your starting point. Like as you guys continue to grow and stuff, maybe you grow further beyond that or or whatever. Well, but. in in a way, yeah. I mean, I, I like I like to play around and pull from all kinds of different genres of, of different music and styles. Uh, it, it gets incorporated a lot, but a lot of people don't seem to hear it. They just they kind of scratch the surface and and say, oh, it's just it's typo negative yeah That's well I, one of the things i thought was really cool is you guys did that cover of uh wicked game by chris mm -hmm. isaac i was like oh that's a that it's it's it fits for the style of music you're doing even though it's not a metal song yeah yeah it, it worked out uh you know initially i didn't want to do that one uh because it had been done and overdone and then him had their version of it which i didn't think anybody would be able to really top it um when it comes to that version the style yeah uh but doug our, our keyboard player he actually uh he was very adamant about doing that one. So I was just like, well, if we do it, we got to do something completely different. And that's, that's kind of what came out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sound exactly like the original song. It's like, yeah, some kind of take on it. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of typo, like what are other bands that, inf that you guys consider influence influential to your style and like, you know, inspirational to you doing music? Uh, big big ones for me was like Danzig and Cradle of Filth, uh, Def Leppard, Miley Crew, uh, a lot of uh, even Alice in Chains. Um, just uh, yeah, Bush Bush was another one. So a lot of the old the '90s grunge and the '80s hair metal uh, that was some of my biggest influences. But I always yeah, kind of dove into the more darker stuff. But I guess Danzig would be in that territory. 
Yeah. Cradle, yeah, Cradle of Filth was black metal, but uh, a lot of the symphonic work and, and keyboard work was really the inspiration from a lot of what they did. I feel like now is a good, it's like a really good time for metal too, even though some people might disagree, but I was just watching this interview with Kirk Hammett from Metallica and they were talking about Master of Puppets and how it came out in the eighties. Like it, like it's hard to believe it came out in like 86, but he's like, at the mm-hmm. time it came out, you know, people were just like, ah, what is that? And now he's like, yeah, 14 year olds will come up to me and they're listening to like this insane, brutal, like death stuff. So it's like, I feel like it's a good time for bands like you guys, you know? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's one of the things we discussed too. Is like everything retros, you know, things tend to come back around, and it was like uh, the, the fashion and influence um, came back in, into the '80s side. I mean, you look at TV shows like Stranger Things that are out yep. there, and it, it's going to work that way the same way with the '90s, which is more of our kind of premise and, and push in sound. So, yeah, I think uh, that'll be a ticket then to to gain a little bit more on the popular side. Yeah, my biggest fear is that. Um... It will be like like Kurt was talking oh, yeah, about from yeah, Metallica. Yeah. My biggest fear is that in 20 years, people will find us and be like, wow, and we'll be jaded and <laughs> have already given up. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be fucking dead by then. So, you know, maybe I'll give a lucky yeah. break after that. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes, right? Like some of these artists. Yeah. Like, well, you guys, you guys have one thing going for you in that department that you're not in rap. So it seems like, yeah. like that's definitely. Not yet. That's <laughs> no, no. That's the thing that happens in rap, right? Yeah, no, not yet. I love that. I can't. I can't stand it. Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm not a fan. What do you guys do? Like locally, do you guys like? What's the scene like that you guys are in right now? Are you guys Are you guys out touring? Are you Are you playing locally? Um, you know, speak to that a little bit. Um, right now we're just focusing on getting ready to travel for the the, the tours that we have. Like we're headed up to Brooklyn and Long Island on September second and third. Uh, and then we got to fly over to Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. That's October 13th. And then we'll be at the Whiskey A Go Go October 15th in LA. Okay. And then we'll come back and, and hit Tennessee uh, in Memphis on November 4th, I believe. So, yeah, we're just kind of focusing on that. We just came out of getting this new album done and finished. It, it comes out on the 22nd of September. Um, so, we're trying to take just a little bit of downtime. Of course, when the holidays get here then we we like to stop all together and then finish out the year and then wait until next year to get into anything gotcha well i'll, I'll try to catch you guys definitely when you get out here so uh where, where you at i'm in la oh perfect okay yeah yeah come out yeah definitely if you guys are playing the whiskey yes yeah. a lot of great bands there well so i was looking on I, I listened to a bunch of songs on your spotify and i was looking for for what you just said new album um talk a little bit about that like what ha, how long have you guys been working on it? What's it called? Um, you know, talk a little bit about the writing and recording process. Go ahead, Tyler. I just got a message from Paul Lockwood, and it, all it said was <laughs> new album equals fucking masterpiece. So, wow, that, yeah, I just got that message about five minutes ago. So, we did something really different, which I wasn't totally on board with, but we got the album done early. It releases September 22nd. But we got the album in and for we had a big we have a big pre-order. So we just started shipping them out. So people are getting this album a month before it's out to those who ordered. And people are hitting us back with responses. I mean, my phone's going off right now. Um it's crazy yeah, to watch. Deluxe edition, though. Yeah, the deluxe edition. Yeah. It's crazy yeah. to see though. I mean, Man, this album, uh, it's, this feels like the album that might never have happened this time last year. So, Yeah, we've been working on it for over a year. Um, there's a lot more. It's like dark 80s. There's some some, uh, some dark synth wave that's in there and stuff that, that's kind of featured. And then uh, a lot more 80s inspired, influenced guitar work. Um, but yeah, we, we another thing we try and do is you fill up an 80-minute CD, so... Uh, we kind of pride ourselves on, on doing longer songs and everybody's bitching like, oh, can you make it more radio friendly? No, the fuck I cannot. Sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, if you uh, if you want what we're given, then that's what we give. And, you know, if we can if we can chop it down a little bit to, to make it better or easier, some songs we might try. It. But uh, overall, the, the process is very smooth, I think, for, the, for this album, uh, much more so than the last 
But uh, but yeah, it's it's very big, very dark, very eighties. Where'd you guys record at? Here we have our own like little studio space set up, so it makes it easier. I think that's kind of cool, actually, that you sent out the hard copies to the people that pre-ordered too, because it's almost like if it's not out on streaming yet, it's kind of like a little bonus for the fans that actually paid for the record. Yeah. It is, yeah, and like I said, it's it's only for the du- deluxe edition, uh, which the deluxe was made to wear. Um, it's, I think it's like thirty dollars, but I'll, I've I bought this like parchment paper, and I'm only doing a hundred copies of it, but uh, this parchment paper, and then like a wax seal stamp that's got a logo etched into it. Um, so oh, I, cool. I handwrite them with a feather pen on, you know, and ink, like the quill and ink thing. But I'll handwrite the lyrics of their choice, and then I put them inside this envelope and wax seal it. Uh, That's super it off cool. That way. So, yeah, a yeah, little, little bonus. So the pre-order letters to exist. I'm, I'm looking at it now. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the one. That's it. So is it still available? It is, yeah. Uh, the, the deluxe edition is going to go away. September 1st. So we're actually going to split whatever's remaining off from those lyric pages off to the side. I'll, I'll sell them separately just to get rid of them. But yeah, yeah. after that, yeah, that'll be it. Okay. I, I keep looking down because I'm going through the checkout process right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> nice. Yeah. Cause you, you know, I like it when work. bands do stuff like that. Like, um, here was a band. They did a cassette, and there's the wax seal. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So that was Necrofire out of uh, Houston. Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a brilliant idea. Like, I didn't think it was going to do shit. <laughs> like, whatever. I, I was like, oh, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. And then, yeah, it, it actually gained some traction. So. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, – yeah, I'll, I'll be ordering that. I'm trying to – Awesome. Thank you. I, I'm wanting to listen and pay attention, but – my, I, I can sit now. We're talking about people are going to do the same thing I'm doing. Oh, I need to go order that. And then yeah, yeah, that's down, it. you're sold out. It's like, you know, <laughs> that's, so. that's right. Yeah. Okay. Once they're gone, they're gone. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. I, should, I get about four in a day and then I've got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> like I've hit my quota. It, yeah. <laughs> my hand can't take anymore. Yeah. There's a lot of lyrics in there. I love that. I, it's we live in a time too where everything has been so commodified with music. I think people appreciate like it's why one of the reasons vinyl has become popular again. It's like people appreciate yeah. the handheld product. They do, and, and that's the way I feel about it too. Like there's not, I mean, the, the smell of it and being able to go through the artwork and, and read the lyrics or whatever else they offer inside those things. That's all. It's long gone, man. And, and like you said with vinyl, it's great that it's making a comeback, but at the same time, it's still so expensive to do it. Like yeah. for us, I, I think we had to hit on like it's like twenty minutes per side on a, on a vinyl, and I was like, "Well, fuck, it's going to be considered a double LP because we do eighty minutes worth of material for an mm-hmm. album." So I'm like, "That's going to you know increase the prices." And I think when we were looking at doing vinyl, it's good. we had to charge like forty or fifty dollars a pop just to make a, a scrape of something off of it because it's so expensive. But uh, yeah, I decided, so yeah, I didn't want to screw sense. people over. Yeah, and then you got to mail it or like deliver it and all that right. kind of stuff and. Right, yeah, yeah, shipping goes with that. So, yeah, and then shipping rates are higher now. Yes, they are. They're insane. Um, yep. I mean, that's where the world is heading, right? Like everything's going to be. Well, it's like uh, the modern vehicles; they don't even put CD players in them anymore. Yeah, it's uh, honestly, I tried to. I have a bunch of CDs, and the other day I was like, I, w- I want to listen to my CDs, but I don't have a CD player anymore. So I was trying to buy yep. a CD. You can't even buy a CD player. No, it's man, crazy. it's it's crazy. I had to buy a but, DVD player and just play it through my yeah. TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the crazy part because uh, I know and it's so different. Like the sound quality on a CD is so incredible, and um, it's it's weird and different because you can hear the panning that's inside of of the songs and the way the techniques are ran uh, on the CD. But then when you get it in a digital format of file, it just sounds like mudded shit because it's all crushed and compressed. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it's very different. It's not the same. It's that's not, for sure. It's not. Yeah, I've got a CD in my a CD player in the car, and there there are times that one CD will stay in the car for a good week, week and a half. Because mm-hmm. I'm the type of person like I I just want to listen to it, and it doesn't matter where it picks up. I just you know listen to it continuously, over and over and over. So yeah. I'm glad that there's you know my vehicle has a, a CD player. 
But I don't know yeah. what I'm going to do when I buy another vehicle. Maybe actually <laughs> put in. Yeah, I mean, you, you could do like the aftermarket stuff and, and put yeah. you know this in there. But uh, yeah, because I remember like my car had a uh, six six disc head unit, which uh-huh. was great. <laughs> but yeah. So, it, it, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was, I was just going to say. Go ahead. So we're, we're talking about you know these different formats. Guys probably don't remember this. You might have been too young or not even born yet. I don't know. But when eight tracks were starting to phase out, they had a, an adapter that you put into the eight track and then you would slip it right. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Into the adapter. Well, then, then, it, then it multiplied. It went to now it's a cassette that you could put in there and it had like a little tethered cable to a, you know, you could put it on your phone or, or fucking your, your oh, iPod, yeah, or whatever. whatever. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It plugs into your iPod, the tape, yep. the tape thing. Yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> it's funny. I was just thinking, I was like, I wonder if anyone's ever, ever figured out how to do vinyl in a car, like a like a car <laughs> record player. Yeah. You see a fucking monogram sitting up on the dashboard. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, those little horns sticking out of the dash. <laughs> I, want, I wonder yeah. how it'd do for all, all those idiots that put the PA speakers inside the fucking grill so everybody can hear that music when you're rolling through. Oh, yeah, the, the bass guys. Rooms. Yeah, fucking idiots, man. I hate that shit. But anyway, all they do is set off car alarms. Yeah. yeah. Have this for your monogram, you know, <laughs> anybody else listen. Yeah, it, it gets I mean, I'm, I am I love bass as much as the next guy, but it gets to a point where it's like you can't even hear anything else. It's like, OK, well, yeah, this is rattling rattle. the whole fucking car apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's also, so you got you got to wonder if that's dangerous for their cars. Is that like shaking the, the bolts loose? Like. Well, I mean, yeah, eventually, if, if there's anything that probably isn't secured with fucking Loctite, it's going to come loose at some point, I would imagine. <laughs> like lose a yeah. wheel on the freeway after you've been <laughs> yeah. slamming gangster rap for a year? Yeah, I've seen stuff, man, blow out win- windows, you know. And, oh. uh, it's crazy, yeah. Yeah, I used to what? call car alarms base alarms in my old neighborhood because they were just yeah. up. Well, I'd say, and, and listening to like metal music or rock music, in, with a car that's got a full system i never enjoyed it like it was too much bass and then it was too much trouble i just like the regular speakers man give me the nine and a half inches and let it ride i used to i used to play in a band and our drummer was like one of those audiophile guys and he had the good setup he had like this little 280z but he had like subs in the back so it hit with rap but then we'd like be cr- you know cranking some rush or something on it mm-hmm. It was just like really, you could. It was beautiful, you know. So yeah, I guess yeah. it just depends on how you calibrate. Yeah, most. It. Yeah. yeah, most times uh, those guys they just they push it for the bass and the rap music anyway. Totally, so. totally. It's all about like it's it's like the how how loud can you get it to get attention? It's like the yeah. Not to compare it to dudes with Harleys, but like you know sometimes it's the same thing. Like kind of like the yeah loud. Yep, I've seen those two yeah, motorcycles crank up the built-in stereo. <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah nothing better than going down the road on a harley at 60 and popping it in neutral and just rawr, rawr, just revving it up <laughs> I, I remember motorcycles in the late 70s had eight tracks on some of your bigger bikes that had eight really tracks. yes but man like, i never would have remember i've seen a guy popping in an eight track at the bowling alley when i was when i was a kid <laughs> <laughs> that does sound about right yeah, the bowling alley days. And he, he, I don't know what he was playing. I still would like to find out these days, but it reminded me of something on Deep Purple or something with some heavy, heavy keyboards. And it was just driving, just yeah. So <laughs> I love anything with those crazy organs in it. Like, yeah, get you some doors and dude shredding an organ. Yeah, yeah. Was it uh, that Boston? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly what yeah. I was thinking of the intro to that Boston song. Yeah. Is that more than a feeling? <laughs> no, so. it, 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 is it for long time foreplay? What you're thinking about? Oh yeah, yeah, for, yeah. That's it, foreplay. Yeah, long time. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had foreplay. Come here, Tyler. <laughs> oh, yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Behold well, the Goldilocks. Do you guys? Uh, uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit more about like the writing process for the record or like some of your favorite songs or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. Give away to that one, man. Cause uh, yeah, be interested to hear your take uh, on it. The writing process. Well, the writing process for me consisted of Tom. So we send each other. So <laughs> when we're, when, when we're recording, 
we we have little ideas and so we just make it into an audio file and text it to each other. So I'm getting these texts about once or twice a week and I'm I'm hearing this stuff. And it's like, oh, here's where I'm at with this one. And at one point there was three or four songs that we were so it got kind of muddied up in my mind, but you really watch an idea take shape over time. So I'm like, ah, this this part here sound doesn't sound right, or we need to do this. And it's, it's a lot, a lot of it is his brainchild, really. It's his thoughts and ideas because he's a lyricist. So well, watching this thing yeah, come you, watch, yeah, Tyler and I no, go ahead. flash back go ahead. and forth with with you know the drum stuff. He's like, no, we need to ride on the crash here. And I'm like, no, you're fucking mudding it out. Get, go to the ride, go to something more jingly. So yeah, the, the whole process of this album coming together, it it's amazing that it's done. I don't know how that it happened just mysteriously, but it's done. <laughs> how long uh, have the, you guys been recording? It's been over a year working on that. I think so Endless Lonely, I think our first our first single, mm-hmm. because we were kind of unsure about what was going to happen, just even with the state of the band all together last year. Uh, the first single came out, I think, was in September. I think it was in September of last year, but we had had a song come together, and it was just, it was just masterful, beautiful, and um, we didn't know if we did not know if the band was going to actually stay together for live. We thought we might just keep it all to record. Luckily, we're still live, but that song came. We we put that song out, and then. Uh, a lot more things happened and kept writing, but I uh, lost my train of thought. I was th- <laughs> lost my train of thought. I was thinking about it. His brain farted. Yeah, it's been a long did, week. Did any uh, did anything crazy happen like while you're recording? Any any like crazy stories or um, anything like come together magically? Like any specific songs that stand out to you that other than the single? Yeah, I remember um, the For Honor song. Tyler, he was not on board with it at all. He just, I hated it. it was gonna, yeah, he's like, oh, it's not really us because it's very, very '80s in the. But I was like, no, nah, I want to do an A, B, and C segment, and uh, so we roll into the B and roll into, C, and it's just an entirely different atmosphere coming out, coming at you. So I think figuring out the atmosphere in that was was the magical moment for that song, to where it really turned out to be. One of the best sounding, I think, on the album. Um, and of course, we have "She's Gone," which was uh, more of an acoustic kind of medley, but it was developed to where you know I had this like little hook catch in where it's "She's Gone," but I wanted to like, all right, now let me put a twist on it to where how can I hate this person? And it's like, oh, she's gonorrhea. So that's <laughs> the lyrics that came out of it. So we call that our gonorrhea song now. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh li- little things like that, that just kind of pop up. I, I try not to to pregame on anything too much. I try to let things kind of flow. You know, if something kind of pops in my head lyrically that's got a pattern uh, vocally, then I'll write around that. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on. There was just a lot going on during that time process of of, of writing to where uh, I had a lot to say, I guess. So it made things easier. I can't remember who I was listening to recently, but they were talking about how, um, you know, like I guess in like the seventies and the not through the nineties, like it was like bands kind of experimented a little bit more maybe than they do now. And it was like, like, a, like a Zeppelin record, for example, has like a bunch of different kind of styles on it than like yeah. a lot of the modern bands kind of fuck with where it seems like a lot music is a lot more linear now. It, um, it is. How did you guys record? Did you guys use like pro tools? Uh, I use Logic Pro X, and then, okay. uh, yeah, it, a lot of it's just heavy, heavy keyboard work. Is uh, one of the things we were talking about. I was in Paul Bento's studio last year doing the third album. Um, he was like, Tom, it's like, you know, most most bands, will, you know, they'll do between sixteen and twenty four tracks in a in a single song. It's like, man, you're fucking running fifty two. <laughs> <laughs> the process is a lot bigger uh, when it comes to the way we do things, but that's just. I try to take each segment of the song. I want elements to pop out and stick out. And there's not a lot of quiet time. So it's a lot happening and going on with each direction. There's dynamics. Uh, but I, yeah. But it's, 
you know, we'll use you know, the Gujang, you know, the 13 string fucking Chinese instrument. And then we'll go into like a fucking theremin. You know, we'll put theremin stuff in there. Yeah. All these different types of instruments and pieces that could give or lend a hand to uh, to anything atmospherically happening. Uh, I like to play with that stuff a lot. Well, we had a fan of ours that that does like custom rings. He he laser inscribes things. Well, he yep. sent us a video of him because he he took our logo and he sells it on his website. And um, he sent us a video of him laser etching our symbol into something. We ripped that audio and put it into a song. Oh, dope! Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. I love uh, that. I think kind that of one stuff. was in for honor. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just this weird kind of sound, man. It, yeah, but I like to experiment that way. Uh, I think it's cool, you know. Like I remember doing "Beautiful" and uh, using a power drill, you know, to to make different noises and sounds to kind of overlay as a, as a soundscape. And then I think in the opening of uh, a Halo Honk of Horns, I was in a pump room for work, uh, which yeah, for HVAC stuff and uh, the cooling towers are pumped up the water, but those pumps were just buzzing and it just sounded very alien. So I sat and recorded like a minute and a half's worth, and that's you know, it was used in the opening for that. Um, so yeah, just lit, yeah, we do a lot of different experimenting with different things. That's super cool. The found sound thing, I love that. Mm-hmm. That that makes your it, it, it like rounds out your sound and also just makes you stand out, it makes you more interesting. That those it, it does, yeah. Production quirks, and, and just like going back where you talked about with the, the linear sound of today's bands, it's very true. Like if you buy an album and everything sounds the fucking same, song to song, they don't really step out of that comfort zone. Uh, I think that's important too, is to be able to, to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. So we had this interesting conversation come up too because of this. Someone in the comments said something about they're like, if you notice. The reason music became more linear when everyone started using Pro Tools because now everyone goes on the grid where in the 70s and 80s and stuff, it was a lot more kind of freestyle and analog. And I was it like, is wow, because cool. everything had to be recorded individually. You know, you mic a drum set, you've got to individually record each of those drum pieces that have a mic in front of it. Um, yeah. Digital drums, like, and it's weird because I can hear it when it's digital drums inside of songs. Like, you just don't get that natural play your feeling you know that a human can't stay on a met 100 percent mm-hmm. um and i think that's important in how we do things because we still do everything naturally uh within the recording outside the drums you know i think we use superior drummer three which is actually mic'd and recorded drum kit pieces that are then sampled so but we still have tyler sit down you know with the midi side and he's still playing the drums and it's still having that natural human element to it because you do have um, frequency detection and then uh, velocity detection of how you're striking that pad. You know, the harder you hit it, the different sound it makes. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it aids to keep a lot of the, the work out of it so we can get things done faster, but still maintain the more human side. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because like yeah. The, part of the natural drum sound too is the bleed, like the mic bleed, right? From the right which superior drummer has the effects to bleed into the mic so you do get get that that bleed over yeah and you can adjust how much bleed you want oh that's great so if you need to sharpen it more you can take the bleed out of it and uh yeah you just play around with it and uh i know how we went through different snare kits uh for some of the different songs just to add some different tonality dynamics in each song so it keeps things fresh but you know, but another thing too that I notice is a lot of metal music these days is just over compresses the shit out of all of it on the mastering side, and, it, and everything gets louder and mushed together. And I, I like to keep a lot of that compression out of it. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, I have to turn my volume up just a little bit more with you guys. Why is that?" And like, well, so you can the musical fucking breathe. You know, turn your volume up. Who cares? Roll the knob a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, that's so true. I didn't even think yeah. about that. It's yeah. th- th- so much of the and not not to talk shit, but like so much of the newer metal that comes out, it just sounds so processed to me, you know. The, and that's um, that's one of the reasons why that yeah. really high ramp compression is why. Totally. Well, I saw this on the drums thing too. I I saw this guy Eric Valentine talking about when they recorded Queens of the Stone Age. 
they did Dave Grawl did recorded the cymbals separately. Like they mm-hmm. recorded the drums and he hit the pads instead of cymbals, and then they went back to keep that cymbal bleed out. So the God, drums I, I can That's I right. can believe that I can believe that too. Because I'm yeah. such a stickler for drum sounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean yeah, it's smart to do that thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean you can process your your, your kit, your pads all day long, but yeah, the symbols you know, a lot of we have been suggested before to uh, to go in and record live symbols rather than using the software symbols. But I was like, ah, eh, it's not going to really make up that big of a difference because it's already mic'd anyways, and it's done in a professional studio. So just fucking use what we got. But yeah, he's smart for doing that because it makes that symbol sound and tone cleaner. Yeah, and you can you don't get that bleed that you have yep. to EQ out at like high end out of your other drums and stuff. Right. Yeah, I, I geek out on that stuff. I watch all kinds of that, like those production shows and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And when I I have a drum, like drum, the only live symbol I have is a hi hat, just to get the dynamics. Because a, a hi hat, especially with with uh, you know processed drum sounds, like when it's, it's uniform. That's the right. Hat, that's right. It's so that's obvious. Right. Yeah. Well, then that's the kind of the great thing. So if you use the Roland um, electronic drums, they did a fucking fantastic job with capturing that more natural sound from the hi-hat it's the way they developed their kit but uh so we can use it that way but i do agree with you on that yeah the hi-hat is very dynamic in its tones and it's it's probably better to, to do it live when you guys play live do you use an electronic kit or do you guys no. use a live kit yeah we use a live kit yeah live kit um huge mono symbols um, I, I had a, I had a guy come to me. He wanted to, he wanted to sponsor my, he wanted me to buy symbols, right? He wanted to be my symbol sponsor and I play an 18 and then a 20 and then I've got a 24 inch ride, which is kind of unheard of. Uh, everything's mono. He's like, well, I, I was like, I don't know. I don't know about a 20 inch symbol because that's not common, but I don't play common symbols. I mean, I fat, fat and loud. Um, yeah. And speaking of Dave Grohl, I mean, the Foo Fighters, when I was a kid watching the Foo Fighters, watching Taylor Hawkins play, he always had the fat symbols, the Foo Fighters and the Killers, humongous symbols. And that and that that really imprinted on me from a young age. I'm like, man, I got to have the biggest, baddest symbols because you could play but you could play a two hundred dollar drum kit. But if you've got amazing symbols, like, you're, you're good. You're golden. It sounds yeah. like a. It's funny because when I used to jam a lot, the the best one of the best drummers I ever played with. The one thing he would take with us if there was like a house kit is his cymbals and his snare. Yeah, yeah, that's what Tyler's gonna have to do coming up. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking I'm taking the cymbals. I can uh, I can adjust a, I can adjust a snare, but gotta have the cymbals. When you guys yeah. tour, do you like play other bands' kit or do they have house kits available or? So, yeah, when we fly, we have to look at other kits. I know uh, the Whiskey and 89 North, those will both have uh, ho- their own house kits. So, yeah, um, the other ones we're doing, yes, we'll have to end up probably borrowing another band's drum set. I'll definitely have to come check you guys out the Whiskey. That's a great venue. just always has been. So Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're doing those. We got to take a percentage of your merchandise cuts type things. Yeah. Yeah, which is what a lot of venues are pushing towards these days, which I find is bullshit. It totally but, is. Yeah. It's a that's a um, that's a uh, like a, just a I think a factor of the the world in general right now, right? Like just how tough it's been the last few well, years. Well, it is, you know, and the big thing, like nobody wants to pay for you to come. They want you to come and play, but they don't want to fucking pay for it. Yeah. Um, the whiskey's but always at the same way. time. Yeah, you know, and I, I get everybody's got to make the money, but. You know, how are you going to fuck the band out who's bringing you people that are going to buy your drinks and keep you shit in business and you want to charge them more? Uh, that's the, that's what doesn't sit well with me. For merch. Yeah, you just I just like get on stage and be like, yo, buy merch off our website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we don't have to. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, I think the whiskey does it where it's only soft merch, so like T-shirts. So I'm like, all right, we won't bring T-shirts. We need to buy yeah. CDs and, you know. Or hey, sir, come see us after the show, and you can get your t-shirts. So yeah. <laughs> you're like I'm selling t-shirts in the alley. The yeah, <laughs> like fucking drug deals. You know, I got to keep it hidden. 
Yeah. It's Black tough too, because people, you know, a lot of people think that we're rich and we're, it's, we put a lot into this. I mean, it is yeah. a very, a, a lot, a lot. And yeah. it cost us as well. I mean, yeah, it does, you know, our, yeah. our markups aren't that, aren't that grand for us, but it's tough. Luckily, in the yeah. look, down in the south where we're at in, in South Florida or in North Florida, we we don't really have to deal with much of that. Typically, no, no, no. and typically, this is going to be it's going to be one of our first times ever coming up to where we have to fly to play. So That's it's true. it's a whole new atmosphere for us. Yeah, yeah. typically we we like the trailer in, you know, that way we can bring our sound and our lights and drum kit. Bring your own gear. You. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can carry on your symbols, or you gonna check them. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I would love to just carry them on and stick them yeah. up under my leg. And I'm I'm going to try and shoot for that, actually. Because if I lose those. Oof, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, that's what scares, scares me. I, I don't know how they fuck that up like with luggage and stuff. It, it blows my mind, man. Yeah, you might almost be better to like pre-mail your stuff through like a carrying service than take it on a plane. Yeah. Well, you can't do it like guitars and stuff. Fuck, it'll cost you $100 yeah. in shipping. You know, so it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I'm gonna just take the chance and throw my base on <laughs> the fucking cargo area and see what happens. Yeah, I th- I think with the symbols, I can carry them on and just stick them stick them stick in front them of on my seat. seat. Yeah. yeah, they probably won't fit in the overhead, but no. If you got a t- like twenty twenty four inch, did you say twenty four inch ride? Or- yeah, it's yeah, it's mm-hmm. massive. Well, look at the Four-count. dimensions of it. You know that they want for like carry on and and see if it would fit into the little box that they have by the board and the ticket counter or whatever. Yeah, I'm still not an experienced flyer, but I'm I'm about to change that. Uh, yeah, so, honestly, carry on is a good a good idea because I had an experience where they flew my luggage to another city. So it took me a day or two to get it. Like, if it's on the same fucking plane with you, how does that happen? They they diverted our flights and stuff. It was like a whole clusterfuck. But oh god, I would put air tags in your symbol case or in your guitar case and stuff. Like <laughs> have so yeah, we're not, we're probably not helping. Like, <laughs> make it sorry, even more paranoid. You're making me really paranoid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, need to fucking no, take my base not, case and stuff in between my legs. You're not making me paranoid at all. I've been paranoid this whole time, and Tom <laughs> doesn't understand like my fears. I'm like, what, well, dude? What if this, 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 this? No, it's uh, fuck your feelings is what it becomes. Now I'm going to buy air tags, the Apple <laughs> air tags. That's a good idea. If you carry on your yeah. symbols too, you'll be fine. Just yeah, keep the stuff that's most important to you. Like if you're if, if it's not like your your rare base too, like worst very worst worst case scenario, you can replace it. You know, but yeah, well, that's gonna be a different story when the new they're not gonna here. lose it. They're not gonna I lose hope it. Not. Yeah, that's what I, I think that happens pretty rarely, but you Damn it, Dustin. good to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if he if he loses that base, we can just uh buy it on eBay in a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy it back. <laughs> if you lose take your 24 inch ride though, yeah, yeah take plenty of pictures of a year. <laughs> yeah. So the album comes out, you, you guys said the 22nd of September? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, anything else you wanna put out there we got like another five minutes i would say before we can wind yeah, it no man just well i'd like to just thank raquel for everything she's been doing pr girl um she's yeah she's, she's out great. of orange county so yeah yeah she's the one who got us into the uh whiskey show um so yeah just come see us awesome yeah i'll Buy definitely come on and check you guys out yeah because yeah. i know we're gonna do in New York, we'll go ahead and, and release it to sell the albums while we're there. So people that come to that show, they'll be able to buy it before the release date. So, yeah, try to give a little bit of an incentive. Yeah, that's a cool incentive to get fans to buy the record before it hits streaming. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, just had, we just had to reorder the album because it's almost it, it is almost sold out from oh, the time. Yeah. Did a restock it's already. always sold out and it's not even released so that's that's a good thing that's, that's a, good a good feeling I guess. Have, yeah. it's good problems but yeah it's been a whirlwind lately for all of us i think yeah yeah we're looking forward to what's next 
Yep. Awesome. And if you plan on buying that deluxe edition, please, for fuck's sake, include what lyrics you want inside the comment section. <laughs> oh, there was a comment <laughs> section? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> so, anyways, I tell you what, you just pick whatever's easiest for you. Cause it, cause hey, that makes it, it even better. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, Summer to Autumn, where it's just okay. Or, hoorah. We had a guy actually request that song for his lyrics. He's like, oh, I, ha I didn't really get to listen to all of it, but let's pick this one. That sounds good. I was like, there's no lyrics in that. <laughs> so I just, I just wrote in the grunt noises and then mailed it. Yeah, I did order it, but you know, I was like not trying to be too distracted. I didn't, I did, did not even see a comment section, or whatever. So just choose one that's easiest on you. You know, it's being shipped to Texas, so well, that's where I'm oh, at. Texas would be good. Well, if you got a favorite song, we just you can let me know. Okay. Oh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I've had uh, I've got about eleven orders sitting sitting around right now where nobody's written them what lyrics they want. So I don't, you know, I'm just sitting on them. Just just pull it, pull them out of a hat, just like or I do the easy way. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter to me. You know, just just pull something, whatever makes it easier on your writer's cramp and you know stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you got a favorite song that you want, you know, I'd rather give you that. But yeah, okay. If you want me to pick, I can pick either way. You know, put a couple lines. Pick. To me, that's more personal if you're picking uh, a tune. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I'll so, do that for yours and all the rest of the 11 that yeah. are left. So everybody else that you didn't put a comment in there, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, thank Brian. <laughs> that's right. So I'm looking forward to getting this now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'll get it out for you uh, tomorrow, actually. You'll be on his way. Okay, so. Just take your time. Uh, and, I'm gonna uh, do it that way. So it's out of the way. Tyler, I like that poster. Some of those posters in the background. I got that that black label poster in my hallway. Oh yeah? yeah, yeah. That's I got to meet Zach Wild getting that, and I uh I gave him like you know you just you go through the meet and greet, and I just right. I wrapped him up and gave him a hug, and I just told him uh book of shadow saved my life. That's all I could think of, to say. You guys tickle each other's balls and beards. <laughs> I wish, I wish, man. I didn't have that much time, but yeah. <laughs> maybe one day. Zach Wilds is the man. Yeah, God, yeah, he's, he's awesome, incredible. Hey, you I know, got, I, I've always like loved Black Pantera Label, but oh, I've, I've always loved Black Label, but his solo stuff is the shit to me. Pride it's, and Glory, you were yeah, Pride and Glory, I, Deep Shadows, and even or, or uh, Book of Shadows, and then even the second one, which is incredible. Yeah. I didn't think he's uh, like a fantastic piano player. Oh man, he's, yeah, he's I didn't know that. nature. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I yeah, love the fact that, that he's doing there. Pantera's guitar work now. Oh, so yeah. A lot of people complain, oh, it's not Pantera. What the fuck you want him to do, man? Yeah. Like, you're <laughs> just not gonna go see him. Yeah, it's the best possible people in those seats. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I agree. Charlie yeah, I agree. and it's uh, who else who would be better in those seats? Like no one. It, right. Well, well, then, yeah. It's not dime bag. Well, yeah, of course it's not. No one is. Yeah, but they home. All the people that complain, but then you see the shows, they're sold out. Yeah. Fuck yeah, they're I mean, sold out. Today is Dimebag's birthday, by the way. We were just yes, talking about that. That is correct. It is. Yeah. That is August 20, 1966. Halloween in heaven. Yep. Yeah. So what I like about Zach being up there, he He's got the Dean from Hell paint job on on his guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what yeah. I like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just nothing like it's nothing but respect from those guys, man. And you can clearly tell. I just, I don't know, it blows my mind. Everybody's got a fucking opinion when they have an end in that account, though. So there's that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just sit sit at fucking home. We'll go enjoy ourselves. You know, I don't care. We get people on the comments all the time. It's not really Pantera. <laughs> Yeah, well, well neither well, are many of the bands that. that are probably still listening to. Yeah. You know, it's a celebration, like, okay? A, yeah, right. and they like the same old regurgitated shit from everybody else. So, you know, do what uh, you want, but... <laughs> yeah, speaking of Pantera, that, that feels very uh, personal to what we go through. Because everybody wants a typo negative reunion, right? Everybody yeah. calls for that all the time. Mm -hmm. And then somebody's name, somebody's name gets thrown in the hat. You know, by crazy people online, or yeah, that that'll never happen though. No, I, I just, I actually I just did. If, if I was approached, I'd tell them no, I wouldn't do it. Have you guys? Have you guys met Kenny and Johnny? We have not met them. They they are familiar with us. Uh, Raquel works with them, so yeah, uh, maybe maybe soon we'll have that opportunity. I did get a picture from a friend of ours. 
Kelly that was in New Jersey. Uh, she actually was at one of Silver Tomb shows, and so she sent us a picture where she's standing next to Kenny, and he's holding out a fucking third album in his hand. So nice. Uh, that was pretty cool. But yeah, no, I have, haven't met him. I'd like to maybe one day. I just uh, I interviewed Kenny a couple weeks ago because they have a yeah. band. Uh, I am. Have you heard the I am yep. stuff? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. I'm like really stoked to hear that full record. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I know that that was kind of like that one-off supergroup thing that just managed to catch some tr- good traction. So, yeah, more power too. Perfect. Yeah. Well, maybe I love we- I love Crowbar too. Those are oh, yeah. You know, New Orleans is New Orleans isn't that far from me. Crowbar has been in my top five forever. Super fan over here. Plus, uh, every a- time I see every time I see Kirk, he's like, "What's up, Tyler?" <laughs> it just blows my mind, dude. It just blows so my know. mind that he still remembers me being around for the past decade. That's dope. Yeah. And plus he's in down too. Oh, I know. Ooh, God, I always forget dang. about that. I know the, the super group to end all super groups. Yeah. <laughs> Riffs. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I don't want to keep you much longer. Uh, everyone should check out the record on September 22nd. Um, you guys got a single out right now, right? Uh, two singles. We got Endless Lonely and Forever Haunt that featured Nadia Todes. Endless Russia. Lonely, I think, is the one I listened to this morning. But yeah. I was listening to, I was kind of going through some of your discog and I touched on the, you know, the Wicked Game and some yeah. of your singles too. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in that discography that we can't <laughs> wait for somebody to find. Well, it's good stuff, fun. man. I'm I'm excited for people to hear the new record, and hopefully, I'll get a chance to catch you guys uh, when you're out here in LA. Yeah, man. Yeah, please come out if, if you're available. So definitely, love to see definitely. you. Awesome. Well, thank you again, guys, for taking the time. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, everyone, get out and see these guys on tour, and check out the record. Do a get a pre order of the new record and get That's right. the lyrics. Get it before they're sold out. <laughs>